I'm Mr. Franco, and I'm a teacher here at Taipei American School. And I'd like to start with a question. And I want you all to think about this. I want you to, to come up with an answer if you can. What do you want to be when you grow up? And if you think you've already grown up, you can answer that. What did you want to be when you grew up? So what do you want to be when you grow up? Just think about that for a moment. How would you answer that question? How many of you, just now thinking about that, uh, were imagining a job or a profession or a career of some sort? To answer that question, just by show of hands. Okay. I think that's a, a natural response to, to the question, but I'd like to try to reframe that question, the way we think about that a little bit in my talk today. Uh, the theme is to be continued. And so I figured I'd, I'd, I'd address this question, what do I want to be when I grow up? And I'll share a little bit of my story. As you heard from the introduction, I've been in education for about 15 years now. During that time, I've taught every grade level from middle school all the way through high school. I've taught any type of English class you could imagine. I've also taught public speaking, philosophy, drama. Uh, I've also worked in schools as a counselor, as a resource specialist, as a summer camp director, as a film studies coordinator, assistant drama director. But if you had asked me when I was in high school, if I considered that I'd be spending the better part of my adult days interacting with teenagers, I probably would have looked at you like you're a little bit crazy. That's not how I would have answered the question of well, what do I want to want to be when I grow up with what I'm doing. But my journey to discovering that um, progresses through my time as an undergraduate at Santa Clara University. So, I entered Santa Clara University as an undeclared arts and sciences major, which basically means I took a lot of humanities classes my freshman year. One of the first classes I took was an introduction to philosophy, and my professor in that class happened to also be my, my guidance counselor. He was my freshman advisor, so he helped me sign up for my first set of classes, so surprise, surprise, I was in this philosophy class. <laughs> um, he happened to be the chair of the department, and after taking that class, he asked if I would TA for him uh, to be his teacher's assistant and run study sessions with other students. And I ended up doing that with, with him for all four years of college as a result. I didn't know that at the time, but this was a fairly foundational experience for me for ultimately uh, discovering something that I would develop a passion for, which was teaching. Um, but at the time, it was he was a classic philosophy pro professor. He was a pretty out there dude. He was fun to work with, but I got I got paid for it too. <laughs> I got a little stipend for it, so it was a, it was a fun job in college. My junior year, I transitioned. I moved from my philosophy major. Um, actually to an English major. Um, reading and writing is something I was always good at, and studying philosophy made me a lot better at BSing, so I uh, started studying English. Um, um, I students probably know this well. Um, but that year, my junior year, was a second such very foundational experience for me. It was a year that I began getting involved with a community service organization on campus. And as a matter of fact, um, I was intrigued by this community service organization because I thought these kids, these young people, they're like hippies, like running around with blue <laughs> shoes on and dreadlocks and everything. And I was just like, oh, what's this about? Um, but I got involved, and I ended up being one of the student directors of this program. I went to a Jesuit college, Santa Clara, uh, whose, whose mission has a lot to do with what you do with your education. And so, the Jesuits have this saying about ruining people this way. So I got, I got ruined this way with this community service. Community service we were doing had a lot more to do with social justice and advocacy. 
for the project that I coordinated had to do with education. So although I was tutoring, I was working primarily in the local school district tutoring, but we were also doing a lot of learning about the issues that were affecting at-risk students and immigrant students in Northern California. This, this was very different for me um, because I wasn't getting paid to do this work. I was volunteering to do this work. But it was, it was something that inspired me um, because I felt that it was a way for me to not just do something good for myself, but it seemed to be having a positive impact in the community that I was working with as well. So upon graduating senior year, uh, I was offered a full-time position at one of the schools that I had been volunteering at, and I took it. I took the job. To be very candid and transparent with you, I had no idea what I was going to do upon graduation. When that offer came, I was sitting on this English degree, this philosophy minor, and I had no idea what I was going to do after I graduated. I thought I was pretty good at school. Uh, I could just keep going, do law school. That seemed like a natural fit. But I had this job offer, and I thought, OK, this is something that has been fairly meaningful to me. Um, I'll keep going. I'll keep doing this and see what happens. So it was into my first and second years as a, as a new teacher. I was getting licensed and credentialed um, in California. So I was working in, in the school during the day. And I was taking my classes at night on the weekends and whatnot. And I was working pretty hard at this. And I was just like, you know, this is, this is cool stuff. I'm learning how to do this. But, but I felt like a grown up. You know, I was in a classroom. I had students. And I was getting paid to do this. You know? I was just like, I'm living the dream. You know, I'm like changing the world, educating in mind, kicking butts and taking names. All this is how I felt after graduating with a job, which not all of my peers had after graduating. Um, but I was working really hard too, and it was it was a couple years into this process, getting involved. In this I was actually having a conversation with my sister about all this butt kicking and name taking that I was doing in my classes, and she said, you know, you are devoting quite a bit of yourself to this. And I realized this, this was a, a bit of a dream. It wasn't necessarily a dream I had as a kid, but it's one that I had cultivated as a result of what I was doing. And this is around the times, so this is several years into my working as a teacher, that I, I, could, I could say I began to think about my career as a teacher, okay? but I could start to track my moving from the idea of working a job, or even simply having a career, to this concept of vocation. And this is one that I had encountered um, as my, during my time as an undergraduate at Santa Clara University. At a, at, a, at a certain point, not long after graduating, I was actually asked to teach uh, or to give a lecture at a career symposium, so a, a course for other undergraduate students um, who, who were looking for career guidance, and as a recent alumni who had a job, I was asked, well, you know, what is this like, what is this about? And this is where I, I came across this idea. I would define these terms in this way. This is how I would distinguish it. I would say a job is something that, some work that you do for money, something that you do for pay. As a high school student, I had many jobs. I worked at a McDonald's. My, I had a, a friend's parent owned the McDonald's that I worked at. So it was a fun summer job. I worked at an ice cream parlor, scooping ice cream. That was fun because we got to eat as much ice cream as we wanted. Um, and I worked as a valet at a country club. And that was really fun because I got to valet some really cool bars. Um, I had odd jobs in college as well. Those are things I was doing for money, for work. Um, once I started teaching, I started thinking about that in terms of a career. And, and I would define that as something that has more long-term implications, professional implications for advancement. And that is something that I was doing in the context of trying to get better, uh, learning more, trying to uh, establish my credentials as a teacher uh, to progress in the profession. But I really started thinking about what I was doing and how I felt about it, the impact that it was having on me as a person, my identity, my personality. And I came to this idea of vocation. The term vocation has Latin roots. 
uh, the term is vocatio or vocare, uh, both of which mean a call or a summons, a call. That also has a lot of Christian uh, records embedded in it. I would consider a vocation something to which you are especially drawn, some kind of work to which you're especially drawn, uh, for which you're also particularly well suited or uniquely qualified. I would say this is related to a, a type of gift that you may have. Uh, a lot of people think about doing things that are related to their talents, but you probably think of a lot of people that have a lot of really strong, interested, or varied talents. It doesn't necessarily have a lot to do with the type of work that they do, not always. But this gift, this type of work, should also, in this way, um, have an impact um, beyond just on you. So this is a place where that gift that you have also fits a type of need in the world or in a certain community. This is, this is how I would characterize the term vocation, as opposed to just jobs or working careers. Okay? So this is how I'd like to to, to ask you guys to start thinking about reframing this question. You know, it's most certainly the case that there are people who work, who separate their work lives from their personal lives. That, that seems fair, okay? But there are a lot of people who do work that they feel is really tied into their personality and their identity. With, with who they are, the values connected to the type of work they're doing does have something to do with who they are. And I believe, personally, from my experience, that when you can find that kind of work, that that's a very deeply satisfying and personally fulfilling and rewarding type of work. These are probably the people, the adult people that you know in your life, um, who seem to really love their jobs, who seem to love the work that they do. Um, and, you know, sometimes you can be frustrated with your job and still really love your work, okay? Um, so I'd like for you to think about that idea again. How do we answer this question of, of, of what I want to be? Is it, is it really what I want to do as a job or is it who I want to be as a person? I would. I would say a lot of my vocational training, a term has connotation, but, but, but a lot of my ability to explore that, um, I, would, I would owe it to two different things. One is the ability to, to go to college and take classes and learn things without that being under the pressure of the job that was connected to, to, to what I was going to do after college. Being able to take classes that I hadn't had the opportunity to in high school, learn new things, explore my own interests, uh, figure out stuff that I wasn't interested in. Um, in college was around the time that I got involved in the performing arts. And I didn't have a very strong performing arts you know, department in my high school. And it's something that has been very personally rewarding for me. And I'm very grateful to be able to do that now. But I got to explore that in college. The other thing I would credit with being able to do that, to be able to go off to college without feeling the pressure of having to go into a certain job or career, it really is the person that told me how to answer that question to begin with, and that is my mother. Uh, when, when I was a kid, my mom basically taught me and my siblings to answer this question this way. When I grow up, not to supply a job, but to answer that question by saying the kind of person that I wanted to be. I distinctly remember having these conversations with my mom as a kid. And we had come to the conclusion, I said to my mom, when I grow up, I want to be generous and I want to be kind. I also remember telling her I wanted to travel the world and, and all of those things I think are true. And she never pushed me into a certain job. She said, do whatever you want. Do whatever makes you happy. That's how I learned to answer that question. So I'm going to push that back on you. I'm going to ask you to reconsider this question in this way. I'd like to encourage you to think about, as you develop as a person, whether you're a young person 
or whether you're an old person, <laughs> older person, um, we can still think about this question. I still think about this question. What do I want? Do I, what do I want to do? There are lots of things that I want to do. I want you to think about um, not just what you want to do. I want you to think about who you want to be as well. I want you to think about, even at your age, particularly to the students here, Think about what you commit yourself to now. Think about the work that you're doing. As students, you have work to do. But think about what you commit yourself to. Are the things you're giving yourself to just work? Is it just jobs? Or is it something that speaks to you? Do you commit yourself to things that you can speak to? Are you committing yourself to something that feels like it calls you to a certain purpose, that activates a gift that you have? that activates the gifts and others around you. And I challenge you, ask your teachers, how many of your teachers went to college to become teachers? When I was getting my credential, I was one of the youngest people um, in the program. Most of the people who I was working with to get licensed as a teacher, as a teacher were people who were coming from other professions, other careers. Ask your teachers, how many of them in high school said to themselves, I'm gonna go be a high school teacher? Ask your parents. Ask the other adults in your life. If they set out to just do that job that they find themselves currently doing. But also think about the value connected to the work that you wanna do, okay? It's something that you can do at your age, especially because a lot of you have that college theme looming over you to not think of college just as an opportunity to get training for a specific job, but to really think about college as an opportunity for you to discover your gifts and to think about the you-sized niche out there in the universe, that fit between who you are and that need that the world has for what you can bring to the universe. So we can think about the work that we do as something that's, that's connected to our gifts, our person, our identity, and how we're uniquely and wonderfully made. Thank you. <laughs>